So I'll start with a, a bit of an advertisement. Uh, we had a lovely meeting in Hampstead on Saturday and the next meeting um, I've booked for Hampstead is the 14th of May. So um, if you needed some time to think about whether you'd like to come to that or not, it's, uh, it's three weeks time, three weeks on Saturday. And I have planned, um, I booked the Philadelphia Association in Hampstead for the, um, the one Saturday each month up until August. So we'll see how that goes. Can you hear the panting dog? Yeah. <laughs> it's popping. Really what we're speaking about, what <coughs> speaking about, seemingly, is the end of waiting. I was always waiting, at least to some extent, for something better, for whatever was coming next. And for no good reason, that can simply stop. The illusion is that there is something coming. The, there isn't anything in place of the waiting. This arrives and departs simultaneously, you could say. We have to speak in time when we talk about it. But the arrival and the departure are not two. What remains we can't speak about. The best I have to offer as a description is nothing or emptiness. But really, that's just because it's indescribable. It's not knowable. Yet it is all that there is. But they're not waiting for something else. is immeasurably easier, more peaceful. Effortless. And really the, the sense of waiting is the seeking is the looking for. And it is dreadfully good news that there is nothing to find. There's nothing to be found. There is just what is. And what is isn't found. It just is the case already. So it doesn't feel like a finding. 
I think that's why the the seeking is so elusive or the finding the end of the seeking is so elusive because there is actually nothing to find this is all already that could be found that can be found there is no other possibility and the impossibility of possibilities is the end of hope And strangely, that's not at all hopeless. Because without hope, hopelessness is equally redundant. Without hope, hopelessness makes no sense. This is neither hopeful nor hopeless. Of course, it could appear and feel either anyway, just as it does, as it is. In that sense, this is no news at all. The news is that there's no news. You may find that you're not interested or there's very little interest in the news anymore. Maybe there can be interest still, but not investment. There's no investment in the news. The news is suggesting what's right and what's wrong about what's happening. And of course, a lot of news is not actually news, it's suggesting solutions. I have watched the news today, and it was noticeable that a lot of what was called news is suggestions about where things are going wrong and about how we might go about putting them right. That's not news, really. Prescriptive, not descriptive. And this, um, one of the great illusions that self kids itself is that description is, <laughs> description is an understanding and explanation. When really all we have is description. And even description is just storytelling. But self is not usually satisfied with a, a description. It wants reasons, wants explanation. And the suggestion is that there is no explanation. There can be any explanation and they're all empty. It was really devastating here when it was obvious that all my understanding was for nothing. It's for nothing. And yet that is the freedom. Freedom from the, the one who needed to know why and how life is as it is. Simply because I was afraid that if I didn't know, I wouldn't be able to keep myself safe. We all know life isn't safe.
and no longer having the ability to delude oneself <laughs> that safety is a possibility, that's immeasurably freeing and wonderfully at peace. We're talking about a peace that is beyond understanding. It doesn't need to make sense. The making sense or the need to make sense is the essence of suffering. I, I was always drawn to those who it appeared and the way that they spoke, it seemed to suggest that they had made sense of life, that they had come to some deep understanding. And the reason it was so attractive is because that's what I wanted for myself. That's what self wants, to know. And I can still value the knowledge and understanding my car mechanic has of the engine of my car when, because I've got no idea. I can have great respect for that, but I can't have any respect anymore for those who say they understand ethics, morality, um, spirituality, the meaning of life, the purpose of life. I don't mean I disrespect it. It's just, uh, just it, you could say complete apathy for anyone who suggests they know especially what's right for you, for me, for everyone. It's, um, I can kind of, I can kind of have pity for that because it's just seen as outrageous arrogance of that self can delude itself with such knowledge and understanding of how life works. Life doesn't work. Life took early retirement. <laughs> such a curse, isn't it? Trying to make your life work, my life work. It's my life's work. Fuck it. Life's not a job. And there are no successes or failures. I mean, there's the greatest story of all. I'm a failure. He's a success. She's on her way to success and he's, he's living in the faded glories of his past successes. It's all rubbish. It's, none of it's true. So when all the stories of success or failure, right and wrong, um, improvement and decline. When life is simply just as it is, and of course it does include all of those thoughts and judgments. It doesn't, there's nothing excluded. But without me and my desire to be a success, to be special, then um, I 
life has a simple ease and okayness that isn't spectacular. <laughs> and yet I would wish it for everyone. You can't get much more paradoxical than that. <laughs> and I'm not speaking about life being okay all the time. It's simply that life can be okay when it's not okay. Well, if you'd like to ask anything or share anything, then um, put your hand up. Verisha has a hand up. Verisha. Hi. Veresha, is it? Yes, yes, Veresha. Double E is like I, is spelling like I, Veresha. Yeah. Veresha. But it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> uh, nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, so I tried to invite you to Helsinki, but no, no, not real health or <laughs> resonance. So nobody, else, nobody else. Just he sent me. He he sent me. Uh, Miko <laughs> sent me a uh, how to invite or how to organize it. But I'm not living in Helsinki, so oh, it doesn't okay. make any sense. Yeah. Well, may, but, maybe maybe uh, I'll contact Mika. Yeah, I told you last time. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah. I, I, yeah, can, I yeah. would. Love to meet you personal. I've got a brain, uh, you know, my memory is like a sieve. I, I'd forgotten completely, but yeah. Maybe Darren is supporting you. Maybe, maybe Darren's got a better yeah, memory. Yeah, than me. I understand. Okay. Uh, just one personal question. I mean, it's all so clear what you speak. It's clear. And uh, when it became clear to you. Yeah. Did you step into the old thinking again, or was it over immediately? Wow. The identification, the I, the, yeah, just came up. Huh. <laughs> I... I can't say when it became clear. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't. I couldn't really say that it's clear now. Um, one of the things that I was always looking for as a seeker was clarity. Mm. Um, I really liked the idea that there were there were speakers about this who had much greater clarity than other speakers, and it was clarity that would lead me to whatever I'd fantasized about liberation or enlightenment, um, awakening. Mm. And it was clarity that was important. But uh, this is, um, I don't, again, I just think that's, that's just for self, this idea of a clear understanding. One of the most shocking aspects of this is that what was clear, what is clear, is that this is regardless of understanding. This actually doesn't take any understanding. Now, I know that sounds, it sounds no, ridiculous. No, no, I, 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 I ridiculous, get a glimpse it, what you mean. But, yeah. but it is, by understanding, I mean intellectual understanding. This is, this is in spite of, regardless of understanding. Um, whether there's understanding or not, this is as it is. So if you think you're drowning in uh, a vat of mud and everything is very unclear, 
and you can't see for the mud, or you think you're in crystal clear waters when you know you're seeing everything in in precise clarity. This is of no relevance at all. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, 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 I've mentioned this quite a lot, so apologies to those who heard it many times, but there was no moment of clarity. Mm. You know, that's what, really, that's what I was waiting for. And I can be very, very clear that there was no moment. <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't a time when there was clearly a self and then clearly there wasn't a self. There is simply no knowing of the absence of self. Oh. And, and then what? there is nothing in place. So what, what I seem to be as this sense of being me, this sense of I am, was that I understood, that I knew. So I knew what I knew. I knew what I was clear about. I knew what I understood and what I didn't understand. And of course, I also knew what I needed to understand in order to gain full understanding and clarity. And all of that, you could say all of that died, and yet the, the knowledge and the understanding remains. It's just empty. It just, just doesn't mean anything. It just has no weight or value other than if I'm, because the only value of understanding, and uh, I just think it's one of the great myths of spiritual seeking, that it's about knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, I'm <laughs> I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Maybe this year. I'll get Darren to contact me. Okay, thank you. A delegation. David has his hand up. David. Oh, your microphone, David, is kind of, it's not muted, but it's really muffled. It's very quiet. Oh yeah, can't can't hear you, Mark. Can't hear you, Dave. Can't hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, but it's really quiet. It's like try plugging the mic in again, or is there some? Is there something over? It sounds like you're under like a hundred pillows. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a problem. Yeah, just. It, it is like he's at least three rooms away. Yeah. Uh, just here. It's a shame because I'm seeing really interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, uh, shout it to me, David. Shout it's it. Very brief, actually. It's really, I need to sort of need to sort this out. Thanks. Can you, can you hear me a wee bit? I can hear you a wee bit. Yeah, a wee bit. It's not enough. Um, you know, the understanding thing is just a, quite a coincidence that. Uh, this afternoon I was reading something and um, it's dancing on the heads of pins, isn't it, really? Your notion of understanding compared to what someone else's might be. And I mean, it's good to discuss it, but, but this is from Yuji, a old pal. Yeah. Here's another take on understanding, which I think resonates for some. Understanding, in the sense, in the sense I mean it, is that state of being, let's forgive him that, when the questions aren't there anymore. That's his definition of understanding. I can live with that, but I can also live with what you're saying as well. All I'm saying is we can talk for hours about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that I, yeah, I, I kind of like that. But do you, the abs, I don't, I don't. I guess what I, what I mean, what I'm trying to convey is that because I, I totally agree with the absence of the questions. That's really what we're speaking about. Just not questioning life, really, in the way that I always did. As oh. yeah, so 
the other expression I think, I hope I'm not making this up, is that called flying pole. Great stuff. In fact, back to the Tony Parsons thing of, you know, Zen got it really right for the first week. And this guy's from the first week, you know, back so many centuries. I love that from Tony. Yeah, those Zen guys, they were really on the ball for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> He's from that week, definitely. Right. Uh, amazing book, um, if you're into books. And, uh, no, I love a bit of Wang Po. Well, you know Wang. <laughs> oh, I know him, Wang. He you was, know, yeah. It's great stuff. I, don't yeah. know. I, had, I had a four ball with him the other week. <laughs> anyway. He, on two or three occasions, he uses an expression, of course it's in translation, it's centuries years old. He goes, there's not much going on here, apart from, he used the word, a tacit understanding. That's all. A tacit understanding. Tacit, you know, it's just, I, you know, it's just kind of, you can't put your finger on it. But you could call it something else. And yeah, understanding is confusing. And I think, it, I mean, it, Understanding does point to something extremely cerebral and intellectual. And that's yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, I, I mean, that's when I use understanding, when I say it's not about understanding, it's, it's because it's not. It, all that intellectual knowledge and understanding just was, was obviously for nothing because it's just this and this doesn't require any understanding. Maybe other than a tacit understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I've just got to plug my computer in. I'm not plugged in. Yeah. Well, fine. I mean, it's still maybe just a flag paper too thick, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Rock and roll. Well, most of you know, speak speaking about it is always a flag paper too Absolutely, thick. You yeah. could you yeah. could say, David. Yes, sir. but it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, and I might I might well I might well nick that and use tacit understanding. Did I quite I quite like that. Copyright, he's dead. Do, yeah? Well, he's not going to argue with me, is he? Right, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thanks, David. I'll find you something about that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Wu, Wu Sin is another one. If you've not, if you've not had a look at Wu Sin, I don't know how to pronounce it. Wu Sin. Uh, go ahead, David. Hi, Tim. Hi, David. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Uh, I think it's great that you're doing um, live meetings again. A bit far for me to get to. Is there... No excuses, David. <laughs> Is there any likelihood that you do a live retreat? Um, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm just seeing how the the you know the afternoon meetings go, and um, yeah. Yeah. the thing about doing a retreat is is uh, it's a lot of investment and effort and yeah, organize, yeah. an organization. Yeah, I mean I've really enjoyed the two Zoom ones I did with you. A lot yeah. Of, oh no, I'd one would be great. I think. Right. I'd see. Yeah, I'd certainly. I would. I would love to do that. Um, yeah. In order, it, it would be a lot of work for it not to. Um, there's quite a lot of investment of time. Yeah, you'd need a certain number of people to make it. Uh, yeah, and it, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find somewhere suitable, really. Yeah, yeah. I am doing, oh, I know it's a little bit further for you, David, but yeah. you could come to Copenhagen because that's all already booked and ready to go. Well, a that's a retreat in Copenhagen, or well, you can say it's a retreat. It's not a residential retreat, yeah. but it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, okay. In um, it's the first the first weekend in September, 
um, Annette and Lotta have invited me. I went last September and I'm going back there for the first weekend in, in September. Mm. I mean, I think there is something about a residential retreat, but again, you know, yeah, that's mm. um, I'm not Tony Parsons, you know, bumps on seats and all that. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, thanks, David. But yeah, you might you might consider that Copenhagen mm. is very beautiful. Right. Yeah, it's possible. I'm plugging it. It is great, though. Mm. Well, when you were talking, I think it was a few weeks ago, and um, you you said maybe uh, I'm well, I'm paraphrasing. I might not have have the wording quite right, but you you said something on the lines that this was not what you what you thought it would be. It wasn't. No, I'm not sure. It. What what were you imagining? Well, exactly. It's not what you. It's not whatever what you imagine, is it? Yeah. So, so whenever you're fantasizing about whatever we're going to call what you've you've been looking for, liberation, mm. awakening, mm. enlightenment, yeah, uh, whatever you fantasized about it, of course, it, it of course it, it's not that, mm. Mm. because that that's a fantasy. Sure. And this, this, well, I would say the main reason I say that is because this is far too ordinary. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because th what we're speaking of is this, David. This. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, and I'm guessing this doesn't appear spectacular, does it? Well, it, it just. I mean, is, you are well, speaking. It just is what it is, isn't it? Well, yeah. Exactly. So this is what it is already and that's it yeah. yeah there's a i mean i think people tend to uh uh imagine it's going to be something spectacular it's not it's going to be the special this not a absolutely different. yeah and um i'm really we're talking about the end of so when I say ordinary, I just mean as it is. And of course, if ordinary is all there is, then of course it is special. You, you can't get anything more special than everything. Can you? Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculously simple. This, so it, there, is, there is nothing to hope for. And you can't get anything more special than that. But it's incredibly ordinary. The most, and it's not a prize, you know, it's not an attainment. There is no one, you don't receive a certificate. You don't, I mean, I've had no verification of my enlightenment from anyone. I haven't had certification. I've had no affidavits from other enlightened beings mm. to say that mm. I am enlightened. The, the, you know, whatever you're waiting for, which is some confirmation, either from yourself or from other selves of your status now as a no one, well, you won't get that from yourself and you certainly won't get it from anyone else. Mm. Mm. So it's the most empty... Well, it's um, the prize is no prize. Mm. I remember quite a few years ago now when I was uh, kind of interested in Zen. I was very, um, I think it was, yeah, I, I kind of became interested in Zen via Osho. I read a couple of Osho's commentary on the ten, the ten balls, and he talks quite a lot about ordinariness. And for a time, I was quite very attracted to the this same idea of ordinariness but not it was a the concept I had was that it was a special kind of ordinariness <laughs> yeah exactly it wasn't just ordinariness no I don't want so I know what ordinary is but not Osho's ordinary yeah, he, exactly. he thought Osho's ordinary must be extraordinary exactly yeah 
I tell you what, Osho was the least ordinary, wasn't it? He's, <laughs> I mean, if ever there was a man who portrayed extraordinary, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I was, he, uh, he, he did, really, I mean, if he wanted to convey ordinary, Osho needed some help <laughs> to work on that. I, I was reading somewhere recently about, well, the, you know, the whole fiasco in America with when they set up this, uh, they were building this enormous, um, Commune, and it really upset the the, um, the locals, and they yeah. um, they tried to rig the local elections by poisoning people with salmonella, so that they um, so that they couldn't vote. And to this day, that's still the biggest biological weapons attack in America. Well, wow. it was Osho and his followers. There's load. There's loads of Osho story. I watched a documentary not so long ago. It was interesting. Oh, the one heady, on they, they were heady days, weren't they? Yeah. Being an Osho yeah. follower. <laughs> well, though I have to say he was, I mean, I was never a follower, but no, he, was, he, he was an eye-opener for me because I'd um, read a lot of Krishnamurti, and Krishnamurti is very austere, and he keeps every, uh, hmm. well, he used to call it this beastly business of living. And I mean, Osho is much more embracing everything, it's saying yes to everything. So, yeah, was, apart was, from, I would say that, apart from ordinariness. Yeah, I mean, well, when, yeah. When he, when he turned up in one of his 18 Rolls Royces and in his most gorgeous robes and sat in his throne, I, <laughs> it didn't, it doesn't reek of humility, does it? No. no, no. <laughs> You could say you could say that there's no business like a show business. Oh, oh, <laughs> very, very good. good. <laughs> very good. Oh, he was a he was a showman, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Well, thanks, Tim. Oh no, thanks, Lady. There is a really funny YouTube clip of him explaining. Um, it, I mean, the way he's. Speaks, I find it very entertaining anyway, you know, the way, the manner of his speaking. And he talks about the word fuck and how um, how versatile it is. If you haven't watched it, that is worth, just YouTube that. Osho on the word fuck is very funny. I would say that's his most enlightening work. Have you, talking of uh, YouTube clips, have you ever seen that? You know the Hitler film Downfall. Yes, funny. Have you seen the non-duality? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very good. <laughs> Again, if you haven't seen that, you should Google. Yeah, that as well. that's very funny. Hitler ranting, and it's um, <laughs> it's just got non-duality subtitles. It's very, it's very funny. But my fury, you don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Oh, you're, you're muted. Unmute. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Well, I have to. I have to say because <laughs> whenever Yuji is brought up, but uh, Osho, I'll, I'll tell you what Yuji said about Osho. Oh, uh, I bet it's uh, good. Yes, it is. It's very deep. He said, "The world has never seen a pimp of that magnitude." <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah, he, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he loved to pimp his ride as well, didn't he? You know, it's, it was the essence of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I like, I like the, this whole thing of just the two things, so, like not knowing anything and not having any questions. Those are the two things that's, you know, I, I noticed <laughs> one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, they're not, it's not easy to notice because everyone says about it. And, you know, when did you notice? And really, you know, absences are not very noticeable. I mean, I, I really only notice, I can only speak about the absence of myself, not because there's any knowing of the absence of myself, but just by the absence of the symptoms that I seem to produce 
I mean, that's that's the only way I speak that there's no self. There's no knowing of no self mm. at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, what what would there be to what would there be to know about that? I don't. I'm always dismayed when I hear other speakers talk about that it's, you know, that they they know that there's no self. It's not, right. a, it's not a knowing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the absence of questions is um, really what was noticed here initially was just emptiness. And the emptiness really was that there was no internal dialogue. I, I, there was nothing really going on. What I, what I called my life, which was this constant questioning and debating on how my life was going, what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, uh, and all of the questions that come with that. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, the, the sense of emptiness was the absence of that. And it was really disconcerting as well. That wasn't easy. I mean, I, I spent a long time just, um, the only question I, I had really, the question that kept coming up in the absence of most questions was, what the fuck am I gonna do now? Because I didn't, I didn't have any of the motivation which came from searching, becoming. And, um, In the story, that seemed to take a long time to get used to that. Not having, not having anywhere to get to. And I was always trying to get somewhere. And it was obvious there was nowhere else to go. So um, what do I do now? <laughs> So I did have that question. And look what I've ended up doing. <laughs> David has his hand up. Oh, thank, thanks, Ellen. That was lovely. It, it, is, it is the absence of the questions, yeah. Hello again. Hi, David. The thought that comes is the miracle is that this brain, this marvelous computer, can actually take a back seat, can actually not care to act, ask questions when all of that disappears and it seems just totally as if there's no need at all to ask any questions that whatever arises is delightful and no need to argue with it how can it be that the that the mind that is so so conditioned and so programmed to strive and to try can actually take a back seat. Mm -hmm. for, for, for me, it was a shock because uh, there was no driver anymore. The driver had taken a back seat and yeah. out of God, how, how's life going to proceed at all? Because uh, there's no questions being asked yeah. anymore. Yeah. But somehow, everything and in the most beautiful way happens anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what greater miracle could there be than everything happening yep. without a driver? And as you said, there, there's never been a, a point in time that I can point to of, of having 
you know, whatever, achieved anything. And yet, that's simply because there's no, there's a one, no one here to claim it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't even claim taking your hands off the steering wheel, can you? That's, you can't. <laughs> no. And uh, you can't you can't claim that you ever decided to you know that I'll take a back seat now. I, no. I, won't, I won't drive anymore. <laughs> Absolutely, that's totally impossible. So there's um yeah, it's not it's not that there's no driver of the dream bus. It's that there's no bus. There's no steering wheel. There's no bus, <laughs> and there's no and there's no road. <laughs> uh, great. Good to be with you, Tim. And you, thanks, David. Thanks a lot. Lovely. I don't know if I've ever told you. I tell you a little anecdote. If you um. I went when I was still a fanatical seeker. I went to the Who's Driving the Dream Bus conference in London, which was oh, well. I can't tell you how excited I was. It was. It was. I'm not joking. I was as high as a kite the whole weekend. I was just buzzing with excitement. I'm seeing all my all my heroes all in one place. Yeah. All together, Lisa Cairns, Tony Parsons, Richard Sylvester, um, Kenneth Madden. Um, wow. uh, it was, uh, if you Google it, you can see uh, the uh, the camera. If you look who's driving the Dream Burst conference, and there's, there's two moments when the camera pans to the audience, because it was a huge financial flop. Surprise, surprise, nobody really wants an on-dual conference. And uh, <laughs> they booked a huge auditorium in, at London University, which they, they, they filled about one tenth of the capacity. And so uh, it never happened again. But the camera pans round, and on two occasions, there's me in the audience, um, one point laughing hysterically, and the other one gesticulating, I've got something to say. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, it would be lovely if something like that happened again. I might even get invited. Yeah. But I, I will say, as it was Seeker's Paradise. Can you imagine? All of everyone you've watched on YouTube all together. And um, they had three, some of it they had individual speakers, but quite often they'd have three, three, uh, um, three speakers speakers on stage and they'd ask a question and each one of them would answer it in their own way, which was, uh, it was, it was heaven. Ah. And I was so excited, I got really terribly drunk in the evening and couldn't find my way back to my hotel. That's what, I remember that as well. Drinking cider with Kenneth Madden, he probably, he, he could well deny it, but I did. It was brilliant. I might set one up. Because there is this, um, one of the, one, I get asked this a lot, because there's this massive surge in interest in non-duality. No, there's not. There's this massive surge worldwide of non-duality. No, there's not. There's almost as many speakers as there are people who are interested in listening to the speakers now. That's what's fucking happened. There is not an increased interest. <laughs> it's a terrible myth. It's, it's bullshit. But there we go. But isn't it, I mean, I get asked about, what about all the new young speakers? I mean, yeah, isn't that amazing? Why on earth would you be interested in this when you were young? <laughs> uh, sex and football, it didn't really get past that till I was 42. Hmm. 
There is disappointment in this. I, you know, I, I speak very positively about <laughs> the notion, the notion that you, it might be really obvious that there is no one driving the dream bus, but it's bloody disappointing. You don't get to go, I can't go on a retreat and get all excited about it, about what I'm going to learn and the insights I might have and You know, there's no possibility of getting excited about that. I could still get excited about, you know, being meeting the people and socialising. That's nice. But I used to really get excited about this could be the one. This will be the this will be the meeting. This will be when it happens. Just in the way that when I used to go to a disco when I was 18, this will be the one, you know, I'll meet her the one it's the same it's the same fantasy really this idea of the one who will complete me Eligio has his hand up talking of meeting the one who will complete me Eligio turns up I'm here Tim I'm here yeah. and now I'm complete <laughs> now it's now it's all butterflies and rainbows <laughs> how are you good it feels like a funeral at times yeah we're at a funeral yeah for that one yeah and we're a dying club yeah yeah at the yeah and the good the most incredible news is that there is the you know that it can feel like a funeral but there's no one there's no one who dies yeah but you could say, yeah, uh, this is always a funeral, as well as a bar mitzvah and a christening. Can I be a quinceañera? <laughs> <What? laughs> You'd have to teach me that, Alicia. Quinceañera is, uh, is that you're a coming party, of a coming of age for a little girl at 15 years old. Oh, yeah. In Spanish. In Spanish. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, yeah, this is, this is all of it, always, yeah. But it can be really shocking, and it's something that self doesn't want to hear, that death is, is always, you know, death is never waiting, it's all ever present. This is, this is always dying, always passing away. Death is not separate from life, you know, that's, that's, one of, that's, that's the greatest division that self makes, really, that there's life and death, and they're not, they're completely separate from each other. That's, that's utterly false. So um, no wonder it sometimes feels like a funeral in Malaysia. Not, not false. No, they're, they're not two, is what I mean. It's not, yeah. <laughs> There's the circle. Thank you, Tim. Cheers, Alicia. This is completely inappropriate for a non-dual speaker, but it's my birthday next Thursday. Woo. It's my 60th, it's my 60th birthday. Now there's a story. Wow. 
um, yeah. So I'll be out celebrating, not with you lot. So it almost feels wrong that I should be doing a meet <laughs> on my 60th birthday. 60, isn't it funny? Because if you, one of the most obvious, this is a pointer for all selves. If, if you ask selves, how old do you feel? As yourself, how old is the, you know, how old is the self? yourself wow you get the most interesting range of answers it's it's never the age of the body that's for sure um so i asked my brother and um he said 16 and i said you're not that old he went no 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 you're right 14 and then i <laughs> i asked my other friend we were we were playing uh, it was beer after golf i think and uh, I asked him and he said, I'm 24. By the, so he's the same, he's, he's 59. He goes, I'm 24. I went, yeah, well, why is that? He went, well, that's when I got married. I said, so you haven't aged since you got married. So what about that? So that was his point of death, wasn't it? Now that's good. But you ask anyone how old they feel, so their sense of themselves, how old are you? You can ask yourself. It's a nice parlor game. I like it. But it, what, it, what it does show is that this, you know, chronological age of the body is utterly irrelevant to the sense of how do I feel? And um, Tom just said no idea. And if you ask me now, I would I would say no idea, or I would say seventeen. <laughs> A really, really, really old seventeen-year-old. And um, yeah. What I really point pointing at is that this this sense of being is ageless. It doesn't have an age at all. And whatever you whatever you say you feel, that's that's true. Because there is no, you know, there is a story of the body being here for that many trips around the sun. But it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It's wonderful. You, I mean, uh, it's very obvious. I see a lot of young people who are very old. And I see a lot of old people who are very young. Arisha in the chat says, uh, my birthday is Monday. Feel, I feel like 27 and I get 72. Eligio says, five year old boy. <laughs> that's not as honest. Yeah. Ellen says, I always feel a year older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. Well, I remember that. Do you remember being at primary school and how much you wanted to be a. Well, the first thing was it was 10. But then once you got to, so it was a big deal. Have you, do you remember what a big deal it was to be 10? It's two, two digits, no, you can't remember. I remember that, you can't remember. And the other thing, the next thing was of course, being a teenager, so 13. Because I thought it was the age of consent for sexual relationships and alcohol driving. Well, I, I sort of knew it wasn't any of those things. And yeah, I gave myself permission at 13 <laughs> to steal my mum's car every time she went out. 
There we go. But that's another story. 13. I was really spoiled as a kid. We had got a big garden and um, my dad's friend was scrapping his car. So he, he put the car in our garden and said we could drive it. And we had our own racetrack around a garden in a car. <laughs> I'm, sound, I'm sounding very privileged now, but, you know, <laughs> it wasn't really. Well, I, I don't know why. I, the birthday thing just made me tell a lot of stories. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's lovely that there's, the stories, it's, there's great freedom to tell stories because when the stories are not personal, when they don't mean... I mean, they are mine, and yet they're not mine at all. They are yours, but they're not yours at all. They're just stories. And there is, there is immense freedom and peace and compassion and love in the storytelling. It's all we've got. Well, and holding hands and hugging. Heidi says she was surprised that you said 60. She says she don't look it. I thought no. you were in your 40s. No, good work, Heidi. Keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Heidi. I can take that all day long. Cyril's saying bye. All right, get your ass out of the camera. So thanks for coming, everybody. I um, hope to see you again in a couple of weeks. So the next meeting will be on uh, what would it be, Darren? Um, sorry, I was just messaging somebody who was asking about the Dream Bus Conference. Next meeting is May um, the. Sorry, my calendar's opening. Uh, yes, uh, the yeah. I think you're right. Hang on a sec. Fifth. It's the fifth. Yeah. May the fifth. May the fifth. Yeah. So next meeting on May the fifth, and the next Hampstead meeting is May the fourteenth. Um, and I I was thinking about doing uh, <laughs> because I have to I have to pay for it. You don't want to know my financial woes. I know. But I have to pay. <laughs> I have to pay quite a lot of money up front to book a room. So I did think in the summer of having a meeting in London uh, outdoors, but it'd have to only be a week in advance when I know that the forecast is okay. And, um, and then uh, it'd be a, just a free meetup and meet up in uh, probably on Hampstead Heath, I'm thinking. I know that's got, some connotations meeting up on Hampstead Heath, but well, <laughs> you you probably don't know. That. Um, coming to the USA now, there is a possibility that I might go to the USA. I've been invited by Trey Carland, who's who's in um, North Carolina, in Asheville. He's, he's been running a Buddhist Sangha for 10 years or more, um, but has heard this and it's fucked him up completely, you know. <laughs> he's had, <laughs> oh, it's messed him up. So he's invite, I think Jim Newman is going this month and then he's, he would like me to go. But of course there is the small problem of a 700 pound, ticket for a flight so but yeah I'm, there is a possibility that i might get to the usa which would be brilliant anyway that's enough shit about me thanks very much for coming um it's been a pleasure as always and um, lovely to see so many of you so thanks, take care everybody thanks tim thanks to darren Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Happy everyone. Birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, Tim. Happy thanks, birthday, Tim. Happy birthday, Jen. Yeah, birthday. thanks very much. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Thanks, all of you. Lovely to see you. Happy birthday, Tim. Yeah, happy birthday. Birthday. Same club here, September. Say again. Same club. I turn 60 in September. Same crap. Turn 60 in September. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Romana's, Romana, you're turning 60. 60. I will have 60th birthday in September. Same like you. Yeah, and um, you're you're looking almost as good as me, Romana, on that. No, no, there's zero. If I look inside, no time, no age. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know? It's like I can do whatever. <laughs> yeah. I hope no I, I hope you're acting very immaturely, Romana. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> good. Good work. Okay. Take care, everybody. Ciao. Bye. Bye.